It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Acer X35's OSD on-screen display menu system. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons and a little joystick, and that is located at the rear of the monitor. You can see the joystick at the bottom, some pressable buttons there. Before going through that, I'm just going to briefly show you the RGB LED lighting feature of the monitor. And I, I do mean briefly because it's really quite unimpressive, to be honest. You can access this by going into the main menu, and I'll go through all the other options shortly. And you'll find it in the system section where it says ambient light. So it's the ambient light feature. The reason I say this is unimpressive, I've got it off at the moment. You can enable it. I know my room's not particularly dark at the moment, but it doesn't actually, even if it is dark, show anything behind the monitor when you're in front. It's purely something which you can admire from the back of the monitor. In my case, I've got the monitor against a wall, or at least there's a wall behind it, so this feature is utterly useless for me, and it will be the case for many users, unfortunately. So there are various different lighting styles. You can have it fixed, breathing, or flashing, so it does various different animation patterns. You can choose the LED's color, red, green, blue, or predator blue, which are lighter blue. So the LEDs themselves, they're just these little patterns. It's got the same on the other side of the monitor. You can see them glowing red there. I'll show you a few other things. So if I had it set to breathing and I have it set to blue, this is what it does. So it just sort of pulses dark blue. And just to show you the predator blue, which is slightly different. bit lighter, not really very easy to see on the camera or in the video. And that's really all I intend to go through with this. I believe it can also be controlled by software, or at least you will be able to do that in the future. The menu can be accessed by pressing any of the buttons or pressing the OSD joystick in, or indeed by just twiddling the OSD joystick. It then puts up this quick menu and that has various little sort of shortcuts there. So first up, there's mode, so you can change the preset mode that the monitor is using. The first three, G1, G2 and G3, action, racing and sports, they're fully customizable and you can recall various settings using them. You can't customize everything. For example, the color channels, they would apply universally to all of your G1, G2, G3 presets, but you can change things like the brightness levels, the contrast, the gamma setting and that kind of thing. There's user, and if you make any changes in the other presets, it'll just revert to the user setting. So that's all that is. Standard, and that's the factory defaults. So with the factory defaults, if I was to change anything, for example, the brightness, you can see it's now set to user mode. And when you're in the main menu system, it tells you what game mode you're using at the top there, so what preset you're using. There's Eco, which makes various other adjustments, sets the brightness lower than default, I believe. Graphics, very bright setting, makes various other adjustments. Movie, the same, makes various other adjustments. You can use them if you want, but I'd advise just using one of the settings which allows full control and just making your own adjustments. Next, as I showed you before briefly, you can change the brightness. And you can see there are bars here, little bars there that indicate which button you're using. Um, it can be actually quite difficult to line it up properly, especially when you're at a strange angle, as I am now. So I end up pressing the wrong thing, as I did just then. So that's actually the one below that. Input, you can select Display Port or HDMI. So there you go, you can adjust the brightness quickly, as long as you press the right button. Or you can activate the main menu system. The power button is at the top, that's right at the top, I didn't mention that before. There's also a little power LED there that glows blue when the monitor is on. And when it enters a low power state, so it loses signal to the computer, that glows amber instead. So if you press the joystick in now, you'll access the main menu system. And then you can use the joystick to navigate through the menu. So there are a few little side sections here. One of them, that one with the four little squares there, that just allows you to go to the modes menu that I was on just before. There's an eye as well, information, and that displays various information about the monitor. For example, the resolution you're currently using, the static refresh rate you've got selected, whether G-Sync mode is active, 
the pixel format used, and I discussed that more in the review itself, and various other things, and whether it's a full range or limited range RGB signal, if that's appropriate, and an option to reset everything to the factory defaults. So back to the menu itself. First up, there's a picture. This allows you to change things like the brightness of the monitor, the contrast. There's a blue light, a low blue light mode. If you set that to 80%, that gives you the weakest effect, and by default it gives you a high brightness, although you can adjust that brightness manually. The strongest low blue light setting, 50%, that's actually very effective, and I use this for my own viewing comfort in the evening. And although it reduces the brightness by default, and compared to the higher blue light settings, or the higher percentages, which are actually a weaker effect, I prefer to have this with reduced brightness. What I do, in fact, I have this set to my G2 racing profile, which I use in the evening for my viewing comfort, uh, but not for specific testing beyond the setting itself, I should mention. So this has the blue light setting active. You can't see it there, it says it's off, but actually if you go into the colour menu, you'll see that it is set to colour temperature blue light, which is the same thing, and that greatly reduces the blue colour channel and therefore reduces the blue light output. It's explored more in the written review. The next setting is Dark Boost, and that is a gamma enhancement feature, a bit like BenQ's Black Equalizer and various other manufacturers have similar settings now. If you set that to level 1, it enhances or increases the visibility in dark areas, so you can see those dark shades. I've got the Legom Black Levels Test website open to demonstrate this. That increases the visibility of those darker shades, so they're lighter than intended. Not good for atmosphere or the game looking as it should, but good for, from a competitive standpoint. Level 2 has an increased effect. Level 3 has an increased effect again. And in the video, you won't be able to see exactly what this would look like firsthand, but you will see the relative change that it gives you. Next, there's backlight response, and that controls how quickly the FALD, Full Array Local Dimming 512, Dimming Zone Backlight Solution reacts. Gaming is the fastest, and that's the one I'd recommend using. Hybrid's a bit slower, and desktop is very slow and laggy and not nice to use. SDR variable backlight. If you're running the monitor in SDR, as I am doing at the moment, you can enable this feature, and that's the local dimming feature, which is explored in the review. Auto brightness. This feature enables the brightness sensor, which is at the top of the monitor, with this feature, it dims according to the ambient brightness. You can also adjust the brightness manually to sort of change the baseline that it's adjusting your brightness from. I don't like this setting myself. I prefer manual control of the brightness, and that's because depending on the ambient light, I sometimes find that the monitor is dimmer or brighter than I would like, and I have to adjust the brightness level with this automatic adjustment. And I actually prefer the more consistent performance I get by just controlling the brightness manually. But personal preferences and all that, some people might like this. And as far as these sort of light sensor implementations go, this one works fairly well. And you do get a bit of flexibility, so it's decent at least. Next, this auto black level. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure what this feature does. I think it's supposed to be like a mild dynamic contrast mode that slightly adjusts the brightness if there's lots of dark content on the screen but the effect seems to be very subtle. I've sort of experimented with this and didn't really notice much any difference. So just for consistency, I would leave it off. Next there's color. So you can change settings like the relative gamma and you can set that to the default or you can have it set to minus 0.3, which will give you a lower gamma. Minus 0.6, lower again. Plus 0.3, higher. Plus 0.6, higher again. On my unit, I had to use plus 0.3 for the correct central 2.2 gamma tracking. SDR colors sRGB, that is an sRGB emulation setting, which greatly reduces the color gamut and saturation levels. So you'll be able to see that with the image in the background very clearly. It actually undersaturates the image quite a lot because there is not very good coverage of even the sRGB color space with this enabled. So I think most users would want to leave that off. There's DP and HDMI YCBCR settings, so they will change the gamma if you're using a YCBCR color signal. 
there's really no reason for most users to use that kind of colour signal on this monitor. You'll be using a full range RGB signal. Colour temperature, you can set that to user and manually adjust the red, green and blue colour channels. We can have that set to cool, which as the name suggests gives a cooler look to the image. That means a high white point, not an awesome looking image or anything like that. Normal, which is the factory defaults. Warm, which is a bit warmer than the factory defaults, but not really what I'd call warm. Or the blue light, which it switches to if you're fiddling with the low blue light settings. There's audio, and that allows you to change the volume of the integrated speakers or anything connected to the 3.5mm jack. Gaming. You can set the overdrive level to normal, which I'd highly recommend, and that's the default mode, or off, or extreme. So that's the greater gray acceleration, the pixel overdrive. There's an overclock feature, and this will unlock the 200 hertz refresh rate. So this is the first time you've used the overclock feature. You'd have this set to on, it's off by default. Then you'd select apply and reboot, and it gives you a little message on the screen saying after rebooting, Use the control panel to try and set the maximum refresh rate. If nothing's displayed, oh, sorry, I didn't read the rest of the message, but you can see what it says by pausing the video. Uh, but basically, the overclock should work just fine. It's sort of an integrated G Sync functionality on this monitor. Next is Aimpoint, so that's an on screen crosshair feature. Three different designs there. That puts a little crosshair in the middle of the screen once you're off the OSD. And once you're off the OSD, they appear in the middle of the screen, so just at the top of the tower there, you can see the crosshair design. I think the first one probably is the best in terms of precision because it's got the smallest dot in the middle, or perhaps it's just an optical illusion, perhaps the third one is similar, kind of a propeller design. Anyway, I don't really care for these features, but uh, they're there if you want to use them. That's the propeller design. I'll just change the wallpaper so you can see it in the middle there, hopefully. It's Kind of a bit faint on the video, but there it is. Next is OSD, various options there. You can change the language the OSD is displayed in. Timeout period, so how long after the last button press before the OSD automatically disappears. You can manually exit using the X function there. So you can set that between 10 and 120 seconds. There's a transparency effect to the OSD you can apply if you want. You can increase that or decrease that, or turn it off. Refresh rate num, that will display the refresh rate of the monitor. And if you're running G-Sync, that'll actually correspond to the frame rate of your content because that adjusts according to your frame rate. OSD lock, and that will prevent family members from easily interfering with the OSD younger family members I should say and this is the first time I've used the feature so I'm not sure exactly how you unlock it so let's see if I can work it out there you go so you just hold the joystick in for five seconds or so and it unlocks again system you can change the input used display port or HDMI ambient light which I've gone through hotkey assignment so when when I first went on the OSD there was a little quick menu and this changes what the first and second function there is. So there was modes, if you remember, and brightness. You can change that to easily control contrast, the blue light settings, volume, overdrive, relative gamma. So it really just depends what you frequently use. So if for whatever reason you like to change your gamma a lot and quickly activate the blue light settings, you can do that, for example. There's deep sleep, and that allows you to enable or disable the deep sleep setting. And this is part of the Energy Star certification process. So to get the sort of highest marks there, you need to have a monitor that can deep sleep. It uses fractionally less power, but it also means if you send your computer to sleep, the monitor might not wake up alongside the computer. I don't send my computer to sleep, so I just leave this set to on so it deep sleeps. It doesn't make a huge difference to power consumption, but enough for Energy Star to sort of badge your manufacturers to have this kind of setting. Quick start mode, that means the screen will come on very quickly rather than displaying a splash screen when you first turn it on. Next there's power off USB charge and that will allow you to charge devices that are connected to the USB port of the monitor or one of the USB ports of the monitor. 
even if the monitor itself is switched off, and by off I mean you've used the power button to turn the monitor off into its active off state. Finally, save settings too, and that's how you save your settings to either the G1, G2 or G3 action, racing or sports presets. So that's really all there is to the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Acer X35. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video, alongside information about how you can support the work that we do.